Hello, everyone. Welcome back to this third episode of the Brain Pain Challenge, in which we're going to finally abuse the buffer overflow vulnerability we found earlier to gain remote out remote code execution and not just crashing the service. Let's get started. If you're interested in learning more about these techniques, if you are interested in pursuing an ethical hacker career, then I encourage you to head over to academy.thehackerish.com. There you will find online courses that you can enroll to and just find a suitable course for you, it should give you a great start. So in order to understand how um, things work behind the scenes in memory, we actually need to use a debugger. And since this is a uh, Windows executable, we're going to use Oli debugger. So the, un the idea behind um, our exercise is to understand how the process memory works while we execute our attack, which is known as dynamic analysis. So I'm going to choose file and then open the brain pain executable. All right, it's been loaded and this is the screen. And what I'm going to do is um, F9 to continue running the script and now we have waiting connections on port 9999. So when we send this, you see that we have a bunch of strings on the right corner, which represents the values of the registers in the CPU. And the most important one in a buffer overflow attack is the EIP register. And as you can see, it's filled with 41, 41, 41, 41, which is simply a hex representation of the string AAAA. So we were able to control the EIP, or should we say crash the process because the EIP points to an address that contains um, invalid code. So to confirm that we can actually control EIP because we don't know what is the exact offset where EIP gets polluted. So to be able to locate this, we can write a script that um, increasingly um, sends repetitive strings in length and then we can pinpoint exactly where the crash exists, but there's a clever way. People from the Metasploit framework has written um, a tool that allows you to generate unique strings. It's called uh, Pattern uh, create, yeah. So it's under uh, Metasploit Framework Tools, Exploit, Pattern Create. It's also in under uh, user bin under the name MSF Pattern Create. So we can use that. And the way to use it is to specify L option for length of the string and we want to send 600 string uh, value. So this is our unique string. So what we can do is simply just copy this and the way to do to use it is just echo our string and then netcat um, localhost on port 9999. But before that we need to make sure that the service is running and because right now it's crashed because of our previous payload. Open it once more, F9 to run it. And now we have service waiting for connections. All right, now we just have to hit enter and we see that EIP now has this string, 35, 72, 41, and 34. We're going to right click copy the selection to clipboard. Is there any way we can uh, convert this string to um, ASCII? I'm not sure if we can do it here. If you know how, 
drop me a com comment below for those of you who know how to use Ollie Debugger to convert a string from its hexadecimal representation to ASCII. But for now, I'm going to just use the web browser. And I'm going to input the hexadecimal string and convert. So this is our string. You can copy it and go back to our Kali box. And we're going to use another tool called pattern offset, which takes in the length of the payload. And then we want to query using the Q option, the string that we've just copied. I know that this won't work, but just to illustrate a point. So it says here, no exact matches, but we uh, know for sure that this was a string that was uh, populated inside the EIP register. So what ha what's happening here? Well, remember that when we opened the file using Ghidra, it said that it's a 32-bit uh, architecture with a uh, little Indian. So Indian is little, which means that the memory is populated backwards, which means that EIP, if, if, if EIP holds that value, um, 5R A4, the actual number or string would be 4A R5. Yeah, I know this can be confusing to new people, but just bear with me here. So we're going to now, instead of the first string, use the other flipped one. And now we see that there is an exact match at offset four to uh, five to four. Okay, so how can we make sure that we have hit the right spot? Well, we can simply just send a string of A's for uh, 524 characters and then maybe add B and choose a string of four bytes in length because that's the length of uh, the EIP register and uh, maybe continue our string with a string of C's and send our new string. Okay, what do we have here? Perfect, so if you can see here, EIP now holds 42, 42, 42, 42, which means B, 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 B. And here you can see the layout of the memory. So these are a bunch of 41s, which translates to A's. And then right here we have the B's, and then we have C's, which are right after 42s. Uh, notice that this memory, 005FF, is the same as this one here. And that's because it's pointing to ESP. ESP now points to our third part of the payload, which is filled with Cs. This is a detail that we can use later to actually achieve remote code execution. So now that we've located where exactly the EIP is and um, we control its value, in the next video, we're going to leverage this knowledge to actually run our proper shell code to get reverse shell to our machine and compromise the service. Until next time, stay curious, keep learning, and go find some bugs.